Hello, Discovery Learners. It is I, Teacher Liz, here, your host once more for this episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. It's Monday, so of course I have new observances, history lessons, animals and plants to see, a new place to explore, and of course some Spanish words to learn. And be sure you're logging in for the Zoom sessions provided to you every day by the Discovery Educational Team. So let's not delay anymore. Let's start the show. And now for our daily observances. Our first observance is National California Day. Yes, on February 22nd, we recognize the Golden State. For more than a century, Spanish missionaries settled in California. Manifest Destiny and Mexican-American War would play a pivotal role in making California a U.S. territory. Under the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, Mexico sold California along with its territories north of the Rio Grande for $15 million. Only days before the treaty was signed was gold found in Sutter's Mill in the Sierra Nevada mountains. The gold rush of 1849 was set off an era of settlement unlike any new territory had ever seen. On September 9, 1850, two years after the gold rush began, California became the 31st state. While many think of sunny beaches and orange groves, California has a diverse climate. Each region boasts an opportunity for seasonal outdoor adventures. Whether surfing or downhill skiing is on the agenda, it's sure to be found. If hiking among giant redwoods or touring historic missions is more your liking, you'll discover it here. Of course, we can't overlook the Northern California's wine country. Beautiful road trips and wine tastings along with magnificent Napa Valley or Sonoma County is a must for wine lovers. Swimming pools and movie stars, California has those in large numbers. While moving pictures weren't born in California, Hollywood sure made them flourish. By the turn of the 20th century, Hollywood built a foundation of movie studios that continued to grow and many of which still exist today. So how do we observe National California Day? Well, go ahead and take a tour of California. There's always something new to discover. Now, most of us live in California, but were you born in California? Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. Our next observance for today is a tasty one. It's National Cook a Sweet Potato Day. Across the United States, National Cook a Sweet Potato Day on February 22nd celebrates a root vegetable packed with flavor and a bit of history too. The sweet potato is eaten and loved each day by millions of people across the nation. Either Central American or South America is thought to be the center of origin or domestication of sweet potatoes. In Central America, sweet potatoes were domesticated at least 5,000 years ago. Peruvian sweet potato remnants, dating as far back as 8000 BC, have been found in South America. The sweet potato is an excellent source of vitamin A, which supports good vision, the immune system, and bone growth. Sweet potatoes are a good source of vitamin B6, magnesium, and vitamin C, and it's also great for the complexion. While many Americans confuse the sweet potato with the yam, the two are different. A yam is a starchier tuber, while a sweet potato is truly a sweet root vegetable. A sweet potato also comes in a variety of sizes and colors, including pale to bright orange, white, and purple. High in fiber and low in fat and calories, this root vegetable is a healthful alternative to snack foods when prepared without butter, sugar, or salt. Unlike other potatoes, sweet potatoes like long, hot growing seasons. This might explain why it is the state vegetable of North Carolina. When storing sweet potatoes, keep them in a cool, dry place. However, don't refrigerate them unless they are cooked. Refrigeration will give them a bitter taste, ruining their sweet flavor. So, how do you observe Cook a Sweet Potato Day? Well, it's in its name. Go ahead and cook a sweet potato today. Be sure to invite someone to share it with you. So what's your favorite meal with sweet potatoes? Is it a dish for breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Or maybe it's a dessert? You could also pause here and write this recipe so you could cook some sweet potatoes at home. 
So do you like sweet potatoes, Discovery Learners? Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. And for our last observance of the day, it's National Margarita Day. What? National Margarita Day on February 22nd rims a glass with salt and serves up a beverage that tastes like summer sun. Known to be the most common tequila-based cocktail served in the United States, the margarita is a cocktail that consists of tequila, triple sec, and lime or lemon juice. A key ingredient is freshly squeezed lime juice. In the United States, the most common lime is the thick-skinned Persian lime. When margaritas are made with lemons, they have a much softer taste. When it comes to sorting out legends associated with the origin of the margarita, there are many. Two things are certain. The cocktail included tequila, and the bartender edged the rim of the glass with salt. So how do we observe National Margarita Day? Well, during happy hour, why not order a glass? Or mix up a margarita at home? Or maybe put on that popular Jimmy Buffett song, Margaritaville. And if any one of you decide to observe this day, be sure to do so responsibly. On this day in history, Today, in 1997, Dolly the Sheep, the world's first cloned mammal from an adult cell, is announced by the Roslyn Institute in Scotland. Dolly was a female domestic sheep and was the first mammal cloned from an adult somatic cell using the process of nuclear transfer. She was cloned by Keith Campbell and Ian Wilmot and colleagues at the Roslyn Institute, part of the University of Edinburgh, Scotland and the biotechnology company PPL Therapeutics, based near Edinburgh. The funding for Dolly's cloning was provided by PPL Therapeutics and the Ministry of Agriculture. She was born July 5th, 1996, and died from a progressive lung disease five months before her seventh birthday, on February 14, 2003. But the disease was not considered related to her being a clone. She was even dubbed the world's most famous sheep, by the BBC News and Scientific American. The cell used as a donor for cloning of Dolly was taken from a mammary gland, and the production of a healthy clone therefore provided that cell taken from a specific part of the body could recreate a whole individual. On Dolly's name, Wilmot stated, Dolly is derived from the mammary gland cell, and we couldn't think of a more impressive pair of glands than Dolly Parton's. Oh boy. She lived about six years. Sheeps of her breed normally live about 12 years. She even had babies, six lambs in total, before she died of the lung disease in 2003. And again, her being a clone did not have any factors in her dying from the disease. In fact, other sheep from within her herd died from the same disease as well. Kind of goes to show that even though she was a clone, she was pretty much a normal sheep. Today, in 2009, Actor Heath Ledger wins the Academy Award after his death for Best Supporting Actor for his performance as the Joker in The Dark Knight. Heath Ledger was an Australian film actor whose career lasted more than 16 years. Before The Dark Knight, he was known for starring in films such as A Knight's Tale and Monster's Ball. Following his sudden death on January 22, 2008, Heath Ledger received numerous posthumous awards and honors. In his penultimate film performance, Heath Ledger was nominated and rewarded for his portrayal of the Joker in The Dark Knight in 2008. His wins include an Academy Award, BAFTA, Golden Globe Award, and Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Supporting Actor. Ledger also won Best Actor International Award, at the 2008 AFI Awards ceremony, for which he became the first actor to win posthumously, which means after death. In August 2008, Heath Ledger was honored at the Brisbane International Film Festival in recognition for his contribution to the Australian film industry. Wow, isn't history awesome? Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is our first president, George Washington, born February 22, 1732, in Virginia. 
This American Revolutionary General is one of the founding fathers of the United States. He served as the Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army during the Revolutionary War, then was inaugurated as the first U.S. President on April 30th, 1789. Before he was famous, his older half-brother Lawrence used his personal connections with the Fairfax family to have him appointed as the official surveyor for Culpeper County, which was a prestigious position. He unfortunately passed away December 14, 1799 at the age of 67. But another interesting fact to know about George Washington is that he turned down the opportunity to run for a third term as president. Instead, he oversaw a smooth transition of power in which his vice president, John Adams, was elected to office. Wow, sounds like a great guy. Happy birthday, George Washington. Our next notable figure born today is Steve Irwin, born February 22, 1962 in Melbourne, Australia. This Australian naturalist, nicknamed the Crocodile Hunter, who became popular through his work alongside dangerous animals on television, most notably on television series that shared his nickname. Before he was famous, he received his first pet, a 12-foot scrub python, at the age of 6 which led him to the interest of animals. In the year 2001, he had a cameo in Eddie Murphy's movie, Dr. Doolittle 2. He unfortunately passed away September 4, 2006 at the age of 44. He died tragically after being stabbed by a stingray in a freak accident. But a piece of lighthearted trivia to know about him is the turtle species, Elsia Irwini, was named after him. Wow, what an honor. Happy birthday, Steve Irwin! Our next little figure may not be recognized for her face, but definitely recognized for her singing voice. It's Lee Salonga, born February 22, 1971 in Manila, Philippines. This Filipina actress who became famous for her role as Kim in the musical Miss Saigon. She also provided the singing voices for Mulan and Princess Jasmine in the Disney animated films Mulan and Aladdin. Before she was famous, she made her stage debut at the age of 7 in The King and I. And in 2011, she was named a Disney legend. She turns 50 years old today. Wow! Happy birthday, Lee! And our last little bit figure is an actress you may have seen in many movies, even her family members. It's Drew Barrymore, born February 22, 1975 in Culver City, California. This American free-spirited actress who gained fame for her roles in E.T., Mad Love, Ever After, and Charlie's Angels. She has won a Screen Actors Guild Award in 2010 for her portrayal of Little Eddie in Grey Gardens. Other film credits include Scream, Never Been Kissed, Blended, and 51st Dates. In 2017, she began starring in the Netflix series Santa Clarita Diet. Before she was famous, she starred in a dog food commercial when she was just less than one years old. In fact, the dog bit her. But rather than crying, she started to laugh. Drew Barrymore is actually a descendant of the Barrymore family tree, which is considered to be Hollywood royalty. Her family has been in acting on stage and screen since the late 1800s. She turns 46 years old today. Happy birthday, Drew. Happy birthday, everyone. Come along as we take a journey to the place of the week. This week we are traveling to Kosovo. Now, do you hear that song in the background, Discovery Learners? You guessed it, that's Kosovo's national anthem. Now let's take a look at their flag. It is pretty interesting looking. This nation's flag consists of a blue field with a yellow silhouette map of Kosovo in its center and an arc of six white stars above the map. The use of blue and yellow is meant to mimic the EU's flag, which share the same colors. The six white stars represent the six ethnic groups within Kosovo, which are Albanians, Bosniaks, Gorani, Roma, Serbs, and Turks. 
Well, sounds pretty diverse already. The current iteration of Kosovo's flag has been in use since 2009. Kosovo is a landlocked country located in East Europe, bordered by Serbia to the north and east, North Macedonia to the south, Albania to the west, and Montenegro to the northwest. Kosovo is similar in size to Jamaica or Lebanon, and is the smallest country in the Balkans. Kosovo's official name is the Republic of Kosovo. Its form of government is a multi-party transitional republic with one legislative house, Assembly of Kosovo. Its head of state and government is a president and a prime minister. Kosovo's capital is Pristina, and its official language? Well, it has two. It's Albanian and Serbian. The main religion of Kosovo is Islam, followed closely second by Christianity. But I should note, this country is very diverse, even with religion. Kosovo's main monetary unit is the Euro. One Euro equals one dollar and twenty-one cents here in America. The current population of Kosovo is 1,799,000 people. It also has a total area of 4,210 square miles. That's a little bit larger than LA County here in California. Not very big. The main exports of Kosovo are metals and plastics. And the main money-making industries of Kosovo is mining cement and construction, textiles, and food and beverage industries. Hmm, Kosovo seems like a pretty interesting place, and I can't wait to teach you more, so be sure to stay tuned all week long to Ability to Learn to find a little bit more about Kosovo. Here is the animal of the day. Today's animal is the salmon. The salmon is a fish. It's closely related to trout and char. There are nine commercially imported species of salmon that can be found in the Atlantic. The Pacific Ocean has eight species. Most species of salmon are andromous, which means that they spend part of their life in the rivers and the other part in the ocean. Some species of salmon spend their entire life in rivers. Certain populations of salmon are reduced to 3% of their original size due to overfishing. Atlantic salmon is one of the most endangered species of salmon. Salmon are big fish. They can reach 20 inches to 5 feet in length and 4 to 110 pounds in weight, depending on the species. Cherry salmon are the smallest and Chinook salmon are the largest species of salmon. Wow, 110 pound salmon, that's huge! Salmon comes in all different colors. They can be blue, red, silver in color, some species are covered with black spots and red stripes. Real kooky fish. On top of that, their body color depends on the age and type of their habitat. Salmons change the color of their body from when they're in the ocean to when they're in fresh water. Salmon have soft fin rays and short dorsal fins. Males and females can be distinguished by the shape of their head and jaws. Females have a more streamlined head, while males look like they have a hook structure called kipe in their jaws before spawning. Young salmon eat different types of insects, invertebrates, plankton, while adults eat small types of fish like squids and shrimp. Salmon have many different natural enemies, like larger fish, whales, sea lions, and bears. Salmon travel thousands of miles and climb 7,000 feet upstream until it reaches spawning areas. That's usually why bears are able to find them, when they're upstream where the bears are trying to drink. Newly hatched salmon are called sack fry. They stay in fresh water for six months to up to three years until they become strong enough to swim all the way back to the ocean. Young salmon live in beaver ponds, which provide shelter against larger predators. A salmon's age can be determined by the number of rings on their otolith, the structure in their ear. That's a really weird way to find out how old the salmon is. Salmon can survive three to eight years in the wild, depending upon the species. There's a lot of things out there trying to eat them, including us, a very important part of the human diet because it contains lots of proteins, vitamin D, and omega-3 fatty acid. Well, Discovery Learners, I don't know about you, but I learned a lot about salmon today. Did you learn anything new about salmon? Let us know in the comment section below. The plant of the day. 
Today's plant is kale. Kale is a leafy vegetable that belongs to the cabbage family. It originates from the Mediterranean region. Cultivation of kale started 6,000 years ago. There are around 50 varieties of kale that can be found around the world today. Kale tolerates frost and grows in regions with cool climates. It prefers fertile soil and areas that provide enough sun. Kale is mostly cultivated as a source of food, but it also can be cultivated as an ornamental purposes. Decorative varieties of kale produce white, red, pink, violet, blue, or lavender colored leaves. Here's some interesting facts about kale. Kale produces erect stems that can grow close to the ground or reach the height of six to seven feet, depending on the variety. Kale develops large, curly, or plain leaves arranged in a form of rosette. Leaves can be light or dark green, violet green, or violet brown colored. Kale produces yellow flowers arranged in clusters at the top of the flowering stem. The flowers attract insects who are responsible for pollination of this plant. Fruits of kale are seed pod filled with numerous small black seeds. They also propagate via seed. Farmers usually plant kale two times per year early in the spring and the beginning of autumn. The leaves are the edible part of the plant. The taste of leaves depend on the weather and conditions. Warm weather leads to accumulation of bitter substances in the leaves of kale, while cold weather stimulates synthesis of sugars and results in tasteful, more sweet flavored leaves. Kale is a rich source of dietary fibers such as A, K, B9, and C, and minerals such as calcium, iron, and magnesium. It also contains omega-3 fatty acids. Kale can be used for preparation of soups, stews, casseroles, and various dishes made of meat. Raw leaves can be consumed in the form of salads, juices, and smoothies. Kale can also be fried and turned into a chip-like snack. Kale is very popular and often consumed in Denmark, Italy, Portugal, and Scotland. Despite their high content of nutrients and pleasant taste, of this leafy vegetable, kale is not very popular in the United States. An average person in America consumes only two to three cups of kale per year. Ancient Romans and Greeks cultivated and consumed several varieties of kale. It was an integral part of human diet before the introduction of cabbage, its closest relative, somewhere during the Middle Ages. Kale was primary source of food in Britain during World War II during the low planting requirements and the ability of this plant to quickly develop under poor weather conditions. Kale contains substances that can prevent development of certain types of cancer and retinal diseases. It can also decrease blood cholesterol levels and absorption of fat from food. It also benefits the function of the liver. Kale can be cultivated as an annual or biannual plant, which means one to two years. Wow, kale is delicious, and I happen to cook it in a couple dishes I make at home. Some people don't like the taste of kale. To me, it tastes like broccoli or Brussels sprouts. Have you tried kale and did you like it? Let me know in the comment section below. And now for the word of the day. Our first word of the day is companion. It's a noun. It means a person or animal with whom one spends a lot of time or with whom one travels. A person who shares the experiences of another, especially when these are unpleasant or unwelcome. Companion. Our next word of the day is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. That word is variety. It's a noun. It means the quality or state of being different or diverse. The absence of uniformity or sameness. Variety. Hola Discovery Learners, soy yo, tu maestra Liz. Hello Discovery Learners, it is I, your teacher Liz. And, este es tu español, la palabra de la semana. What that means is, here's your Spanish word of the week. La palabra de la semana es, peso, 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 which means, kiss, peso, kiss. Beso. You can use this word in a phrase. Dami un beso, por favor. Dami un beso. Dami un beso, por favor. Which means, give me a kiss, please. Give me a kiss. Dami un beso. Give me a kiss. 
Dummy un beso. Give me a kiss. Go ahead and practice speaking Spanish all week long by saying Dummy un beso por favor, which means give me a kiss please. Hasta la semana que viene Discovery Learners. Be sure to tune in next Monday to learn another Spanish word of the week right here on Ability to Learn. Hey, Discovery Learners. It's me, Andrew Lancaster, with our last group of romantic movies to watch this month. First up is Tangled. This PG family adventure film has a 1 hour and 40 minute runtime. It came out in 2010. It stars Mandy Moore as Rapunzel, Zachary Levy as Flynn Rider, and if you look for it, you'll find it on Disney+. Plus. Up next is Tuck Everlasting. This PG family fantasy has a 1 hour and 36 minute runtime. It was made in 2002 and stars Alexis Bledel as Winnie Foster, Ben Kingsley as Man in Yellow, and William Hurt as Angus Tuck. If you look for it, you'll find it on Disney+. Plus. Our final film can also be found on Disney+. Plus. This 2019 remake of Aladdin is a live-action romantic comedy. It has a 2 hour and 8 minute runtime and stars Will Smith as the genie. Let's take a deeper look at this cinematic work of art. This week's cinematic work of art in Black History Month Spotlight is Soul. It was directed by Pete Docter and stars Jamie Foxx and Tina Fey. Soul. Soul is a wonderful film full of, you guessed it, soul. It deals with several subject matters while not losing the main story of Joe Gardner, played by Jamie Foxx, a jazz teacher who dreams of going on the road and playing jazz. When he meets an unfortunate accident right before his big break, he runs away from the light and finds his way to the great before, where he meets 22, a soul played by Tina Fey, who has never had the chance to live, well, because she likes the great before. The two team up so Joe can go back home and 22 can stay forever in the great before. Along the way, they both learn about who they are and make great friendships along the way. The animation, while cartoony, manages to capture the essence of each of the characters, making them feel alive, allowing the viewer to connect to them, and the jazz they use to set the tone takes you right into the film, making it nothing short of a work of art. This 2020 PG family drama film has a 1 hour and 47 minute runtime. It can be found on Disney Plus. Here is today's interesting fact. Did you know that if you eat prunes or drink prune juice, it can help you go number two? <laughs> it's true, and most of you probably already knew that. But do you know why? Often called nature's remedy, Prunes contain sorbitol, a type of sugar alcohol that your body poorly digests, in turn causing a laxative effect inside the body. Drinking or eating prunes help alleviate constipation by drawing water into the intestines, spurring a bowel movement. Like many other fruits, prunes are high in soluble fiber, which adds bulk to the food in the process of digestion while also helping it pass through your system faster. Because prunes contain sorbitol, which is also used to sweeten things like chewing gum, doctors and dietitians usually have you drink it if you're feeling a little backed up. In fact, studies suggest that drinking 125 milliliters, or about a half a cup, twice a day, works just as good as any leading laxative on the market, at least in cases of mild constipation. Those same studies have also found that it helps soften the stool, improve consistency, and increase frequency. Now, I don't mean to gross you out, but we all have to do it. Number two, that is. So yeah, prunes help you go number two. Pretty interesting, huh? Oh, we all know what that song means means we reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun, and I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified for all the fun here on Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day Program. This is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time.